Last time you saw this beam, we lowered it. Today we're gonna narrow it up and give it away. Last time you saw this beam, we made it a lowered beam and we told you we're gonna give it away and we are. But what you have to do is become a subscriber to the channel and comment down below, I'm in. Today, we're gonna narrow it. We're gonna narrow it uh, two inches. Yep, an inch on each side. And uh, what will this thing fit? This is for, a, it's a ball joint beam, so it's gonna fit a 66 and up type one pan. You should be able to put it in a thing or, you know, Carmen gear. Any beetle, not a super beetle now, but uh, any of those is gonna fit perfect. And we're gonna just do an inch on each side so the shock towers will still fit. You don't have to do any modifying here, it's gonna bolt right in. Stick around, we're gonna show you how we're gonna cut all these brackets off, get it all lined up, welded, and a couple tips there towards the end, and uh, it's gonna be awesome. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna cut these brackets off. We're gonna show you, let's turn this around real quick. So we got these three brackets here. We don't need them for what we're doing, and we're gonna show you three different ways to do it. Uh, cut off wheel, torch, and a plasma. So if you got any of those three things, it makes that job pretty easy. Even if you sawzall them off or whatever, there's probably a million different ways. We're gonna show you three oh, of those. You could do four things. All right, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use the cut off wheel here, and we're gonna cut off the, this tow hook. Obviously, it's gonna be low. We'll be smacking that on the ground. We don't need that, but, um. We're gonna use this, this cutoff wheel. You can use an air one or an electric one. I like an electric one because my compressor doesn't keep up very well with the, the, the you know, with the die grinder. But if you got it, you got it. When, uh, you know, like I said, on these grinders, you always want to cut it so it kicks away from you. You never want to turn it around where it's gonna be kicking, kicking back like that. That's uh, gonna get you hurt. So uh, get it, you know, close to the well. Don't cut into the, to the beam when you do this. You're trying to just cut off the bracket. So stay a little bit away, we can always sand it back down. I mean, when you get better and you feel comfortable, you know, cut it as close as you can, it'll save you time grinding. But for right now, just stay away from it. You know, you just cut mostly through it, you know, whack it with a hammer, it's gonna come right off anyway. So let's get that cut off. So the second way we're gonna cut our bracket off is with a plasma cutter. And I can tell you, if you've got a plasma cutter, you love it. Um, they're not that expensive if you wanna get one, but it can save you a lot of time. Um, one thing you wanna do when you're plasma cutting is make sure you got a really good ground to the part. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a good cut. It's kinda like the, uh, a welder. If you don't ground it, it doesn't really work. Um, and the other thing is, when you if you don't have the tip that has a standoff on it, make sure you don't wanna just stick it right to the metal. You can leave it at a little bit of an angle and that gives you enough room to, to get your cut. So make sure you use some glasses too. Some just good sunglasses work with a plasma cutter. All right, so we got the bracket all knocked off, and Ryan is gonna give you some torch tips. Not that kind of tip. I'm out. All right, last bracket to cut off. We're gonna cut it off with the torch, the oxygen settling torch. Lots of people have this kind of stuff around, but um, 
you want to use a cutting torch, not a rosebud. It's just for heating up metal. But um, well, if you use a cutting torch like this, th being this piece is kind of like flat on there, we hold it real close like this. We'll be able to peel that piece right off of there. Just kind of like work it in. It takes some practice, but you can you can get pretty good at that. We we'll just kind of peel it off so we have less. So you still don't want to cut into your tube just because you got to go back and fix all that up. I don't like fixing things after I mess them up. Wear some glasses and gloves with this. Same with the plasma. It's uh, it's it's bright. It give you a little dot in your eye for a few hours afterwards. If you don't, when you turn uh, oxygen acetylene on, you always turn the acetylene on first. This is the oxygen here. This one just stays on with the cutting torch. This is what adjusts the oxygen. With that one already on, so just crack the, uh, the acetylene, fire it up. Don't turn it on a whole lot. Just get it the flame coming out and. Gently crack this open until the, till it just draws in real tight like that. Then to get more heat, you're gonna want to turn it up. Get some practice so you know how much heat you got to get to cut it off. This is very thin, so. heat up the metal then you squeeze the the trigger here that just blows more oxygen that's what blows the the metal away kind of help keep it cutting and the trick is to keep it blowing away just enough so it blows it out and not blows your flame out all right see the other side So now it's time to grind. The, uh, of the three ways that we did this, there's gonna be one that's easier than two of the others, and that's gonna be cutting it off with the grinder, because you leave no slag. The, the slag is what makes it hard to, uh, to grind. The, the plasma cutter leaves a little less slag, so it'll be next in line of easiest, and then, of course, the, the, the torch. Now I like to use the flap disc. The, to me, you, you can get a much smoother finish with it. The, the grinding stones are okay. They're a little cheaper but they're just a bit harder to use because it kind of gets a vibration going and you just, eh, it's no fun. Um, now, Ryan does another process that the, when he gets close to the tube of finishing it, he used to do a lot of finish work with stainless so he had to polish it to a nice mirror finish. So he's, he's actually gonna show me something today as well. So I'm gonna get to grinding this one and he can do the hard ones. Okay, Rob's got this sanded down just enough, you know, just above to where it's at the tube here. And uh, we'll take over from here with the sanding disc. But uh, we're also gonna sand these off. These are to hold the steering box down. And uh, we won't need those anymore. This, the steering box can just clamp on after the fact. So we'll do the, you don't need the, the stops in there to hold it. You line it up with your steering shaft and the bug after you put it back in there and nobody ever puts these things back. So. Uh, what we're going to use to finish it is is one of these sanding discs like this and what you want to do is you want to hold it flat like this okay you don't want to dig into it like this you want to keep it nice and flat where you're trying to use as much of this area as possible the, the whole way around and you want to keep it moving don't stop because you get flat spots in there but as long as you come down while it's moving and you sand it like that long ways not not up and down like this, but long ways, you'll make it where you're, you're bringing the high, high stuff down to the low stuff. So 
that way it, when you're all said and done it's gonna look like it was never there that's the whole idea is just to make this look like those brackets were never there we want to keep it looking clean so All right, got this bad boy all cleaned up. It's looking good. Um, next thing we're doing, we're gonna cut it now. And there's a couple ways to do it. We could have narrowed it up when we uh, cut the centers out, but doing it this way, we're not gonna mess with these. We're not gonna have to cut these off and you gotta put them back. And it's much harder to cut these off and save them than it is just to, to leave them. So this way, we're not gonna have to mess with this. Everything's gonna stay nice and straight. We're gonna cut it about here. Well, you wanna make sure your trailing arm you know, that's where your bearing is, so you don't want to make sure you're inside of that. You don't want to cut it out anywhere where the bearing was, so we're going to cut an inch out of both sides. And uh, that's just because the shock tower will still fit. You know, there's some notching and stuff like that you could do if you need to get more or change the shock tower altogether. That's how we, we do our narrow beams with the hydraulics. And uh, But what we're going to use for this, just one inch, and we're going to use one inch tape, masking tape. We're going to do two inch, you could actually use two inch masking tape. and. This, this way works pretty nice. Just cut you a piece of tape, just like your pin striping. Just lay that right on and go right around. Like that, all right? That's gonna give you a pretty straight edge, you know, as long as you, you, you're sure that you got it straight. Take your marker after that and just trace around the edge because a lot of times when you heat this up with the cutoff wheel it'll start peeling off the tape and you don't want to be halfway through and find out the tape just fell off and you have to try to remark all that just trace the edges here like that when you cut this Make sure you cut inside the line because we want to take out one inch. We don't want to have the cutoff wheel on the outside. We're going to end up taking off, you know, one inch plus the thickness of the wheel. And you might be an inch and an eighth, and that could mess you up. Okay, we got it all clamped together. Um, if you didn't see the cut and twist video, I'll put a card right here. You can watch it because it's got some other tips that are closely re related to what we're doing here. Um, one thing that you want to do different is bevel these ends. This time around, we're connecting both all the way together. When we cut them apart, we had the width of the, the disc that we cut it with, so we had plenty of room to get weld in there. Um, so make sure you get that bevel in there. Uh, if you're using a, a MIG, you want to set your MIG welder up. And one thing that's cool about this is you've cut the material out that, you, that you're actually going to be welding to, so you can set up your welder. If you uh, just take your MIG, Got it set up a little wrong right now, so you can see, but you can just, uh... actually it's pretty good. So make sure you got a good weld or set up on your welder, then you can get to weld in here, do your tacks, weld a little bit at a time, do a little here, do a little on the other side, because it will move and you don't want that. So just make sure you take your time, little bit here, little there, and you'll be good. Okay, we got this thing just about done. We got both sides narrowed, but there's one thing. If you want to win it, you got to do one more thing. You got to subscribe and comment below, I'm in. And we're going to, in a couple weeks from now or so, we're going to pick a winner from each of both, well, this video and the other video. Right. We'll pick one from each one, and then we're going to do like a coin toss or something. We'll figure it out <laughs> and go from there. That'll but work. a couple of things, be, you know, while you're welding is after you got you know you had it all clamped down you can take a piece of like this aluminum squirt stock is great because it's a good heat sink but clamp it to this and it helps keep everything flat as well because you're only going to be able to get to one side with the uh, the other clamps you have on there right, the but angles on there it blocks a lot of this where this will only be on one side and it's already straight so you can pretty much weld two-thirds of it with that clamped up and that's what you want to do mm -hmm. And before we get to uh, painting, we got the needle bearings in there. Yeah, we wanna definitely, after it's all said and done, flush this out good, because you know, you got needle bearings, and this, this is a ball joint once you got needle bearings in there. And uh, 
if you check the needle bearings, they might be bad. You don't want to just run it with bad needle bearings, it's going to ride like hell. But uh, clean it out real good, parts washer or uh, uh, brake cleaner, and just get it all cleaned out so it's nice and get around like hell. Get around like hell. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> anyway, so we'll we'll get it all painted up. I'm gonna I'm gonna DA it. We'll uh, grind it all down with the old grinding wheel of the metal wire wheel. Wire wheel. <laughs> and we'll get it all painted up and you'll see it in an upcoming video when we pick the winner. There you go.